Hello. It's a spooky day in the neighborhood. Oh. <laughs> you, you hated that a lot more than I thought you would. <laughs> I knew halfway through I hated it. And then it kept going and, it, and my hatred grew. I was like, oh, oh I want to leave. This is our musical improv show. This is because fucking Lynn Manuel Miranda won't get back to us, so we have to do it ourselves. This is the knockoff Houdini. Welcome. Oh, come on. Come on. Who done it? Houdini. Oh, there we go. Oh, that TM, one TM, I love. Who do you love? Houdini. I bet that could be something. You're I right. I think there's something there. Good huh? job, Christine. A little nugget. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. Welcome to And That's Why We Drink. Why do you Slash drink? Slash Houdini oh. Broadway backstage. That's it, too. Houdini's Green Room. Behind the scenes uh how am i why do you drink we haven't done that in a while oh <laughs> threw me for a loop there. i've been doing a lot of old uh content we're putting it back on patreon and i'm like we used to do a whole different thing <laughs> we did okay we'll bring it back we'll bring it why, why do i drink yeah hmm. why do i drink uh yeah the theme and the beginning of the this whole concept was we've always got a reason to drink we want to complain it's the so whole concept that was i guess that part we didn't stop no we definitely never stop we just mask it differently now we um, just do it without reason why do I drink? What is today? Hmm. Um, I drink in a good way and a bad way that tomorrow I'm going to Maine. Yes. <clears throat> which I said in the last episode, too. Um, but I'm going to Maine and I uh, we're doing a show in Maine and we're doing a show in Vermont and I've never been to either. So I'm going Me neither. in advance. I'm staying a couple days before and after so I can enjoy the areas. Yeah. And uh, the thing that I don't like about that is to travel across the country takes a whole day of travel. It's a lot. And we lose three hours coming from the West Coast. Right. So I am going to be traveling literally all day tomorrow. Yes. And then even I will be traveling literally all day the following day. So it's going to be, be having a blast that day. You'll be having you'll be sleeping in, eating from Ben and Jerry's. You'll be having a good time. Oh, I'm very excited. Yes. Lisa <clears throat> Lampanelli is coming and she's going to road trip with us. Yes. She's dr she like arranged it. She just was like, here's our Airbnb. We have a hot tub. I was like, uh, by the way, guys, I guess Lisa is. Uh, I'm glad you reminded me because I need to pack tonight. So. Oh, yeah. Apparently. Some swim trunks. Apparently there's a hot tub. Uh, we'll invite you guys when we get there um yeah so i mean i guess i drink for the same reason but i'm excited because i've also never been and i love lobster i know you don't but um we went we went over this <laughs> i do i do think maine is beautiful oh, i do think vermont is beautiful i will say the day after you guys are flying eventually back to la i'm going to um phoenix or yeah. tempe for my for blaze's uh, anniversary gift he got me and him these um tickets to innings music festival where i'm gonna see rainbow kitten surprise oh my gosh that's live. gonna be so fun live <laughs> and weezer and death cab i'm so amped guys how long are you there for um like two nights oh, okay because it's just a it's like a two-day festival we're only going for one of the days because the other day is dmb and that's really not my jam i see i see um and so i'm really excited and i'm very thankful that blaze got us the the cool tickets where we get to they take you around in a little golf cart to each oh, of the shit. stages. <laughs> wow, like royalty. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I'll be traveling back on a 767 and flying all the way back oh, for 12 hours. Oh, yeah. 760, group one, group A, baby. <laughs> I don't know what group I'm in. Probably the back <laughs> corner. <laughs> um, <clears throat> anyway, so that's why I drink. Why do you drink? Oh, I just meant, sorry, I meant to throw mine in as the, I'm really excited for the music festival. Oh, in a positive And drink. Also, also thankful, because I, I will be drinking. Oh, I do drink, because I'm currently in the midst of a Crohn's flare. Yeah. Um, small mind. Some people have picked up on that somehow, magically. I don't know how. Maybe because you look like garbage. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, my God. You just almost made me choke on my own. <laughs> I was kidding. On my you own look, Oh, my God. So skinny and beautiful. Shut up. So, I... <laughs> So I posted like something. I don't even know. I, somebody in close friends on Instagram like picked up on. I was like, I hope you're feeling better. I was like, huh? Maybe they have Crohn's. Maybe. I think maybe like I, I exude. Maybe it's like Gadar where like oh, if you sure. have Crohn's, you're like, ooh, I, I see you. It's called Crodar. You're, and you're looking a little ragged today. Yeah. Yeah. It's really offensive when I'm just looking ragged and I'm like, I'm feeling great, but thank you. <laughs> That's actually usually you coming That's, in. I walk in and I go, oh, what yeah, happened? Like, oh, God, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> um, but so i am in a crohn's flare uh so i'm on i'm and it's very scary because uh it means my medication isn't working they thought i had c diff i don't so now they're like oh shit your medication of nine and a half years stopped working so and you said that usually at 10 years is when it stops working right well some people around like it's a mixed bag a lot of people it works for the rest of their lives so it's like fingers crossed but then around 10 years sometimes people start to realize they're so they're basically your body builds up an immunity to it in some people 
yeah. including mine. <laughs> it's a curse that your body's so strong. I know. Well, that it just fought it off. It's like, oh, we're not going to fight off all these other things, but this one <laughs> we don't want. Your body is really weak because it has crumbs, but really strong in that it fought off one thing only, and it's the way to prevent the crumbs. One good, the good for me thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so anyway, I'm trying all new meds, so if you see me and I look ragged or... Haggard. Haggard or poofy-faced, that's why. So I'm sorry about that and my looks. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, but that's why I drink or slash don't drink, really. If I look poofy-faced, it's because I had a lot of gluten and carbs uh-huh. happily by the way by i the chose way, that and i'm okay with your it. body did not fight it off no in fact it embraced it a little <laughs> too well um, um but so that's that just uh just a shout out to anybody in the same boat i know there's a lot of you so i as i i say this to christine a lot but <laughs> as an ignorant party of the of a, as a crone ally who does not understand what you go through i still cannot uh, I can't imagine truly because I don't have the capacity to imagine it. But, but also, so, I don't know how you do it. But and you're so I feel su- bad. You're so supportive. Like you're the only one who really sits there and goes, "What does it feel like? What is it like? Is it?" I don't like know a- if that's support or me just being like <laughs> too fucking curious. You're like, is it like a knife or is it like? I'm like, I want the TMI. Like, how bad does it get? What does your poop look like? I'm like I okay, have asked that many this times. This is getting really wild. Um, Where best friends? Doctor M comes to play. I talk. Doctor M asks the patient what's going on. <laughs> Tell me everything yeah i just i don't understand and i also like i i am very lucky in that i'm someone who naturally i've really have gotten very few stomach aches in my entire life and so when i do get a stomach ache even like the slightest one (laughs) i've never built up a tolerance so i'm such a baby like (laughs) like the slightest ping in my stomach and i'm down for the count for the rest of the day and then christine's like oh i've been having a flare-up for five days anyway let's go rally and i'm like what are you talking about i felt so bad because we went to um sacramento and san francisco which is when it started and i was like i'm not gonna tell em and eva because i don't want them to worry and so i guess nobody noticed so that's good you do a really good job of hiding it i'm really good at um hiding my thoughts and feelings and emotions unless i'm on the podcast then i can't help myself and tell you everything if i think about having a stomach ache i really just want to go home and cry for five days like the fact that you just live in constant pain blows my (laughs) mind i appreciate it and like it always it's kind of funny because i was telling m2 like it um it's weird because it's like your body at least mine like forgets what it's like because i've been in remission for so long and then all of a sudden i wake up in the middle of the night i'm like it's back like it's so familiar all of a sudden but when i don't have it when i'm in remission i can't pick i can't imagine it i'm like i'm sure it's not that bad when and then, i when i was in high school i had a really wild ulcer that put me in the hospital that's right so that's what it's like but every stomach ache feels like that I, I, like, <laughs> and like not because i like need to get checked out but because i'm just that big of a baby i, I remember having the that ulcer and like i could talk about it so dramatically i can talk about anything dramatically but i could talk no, about it you? like it's like it's the worst thing that's ever happened on earth and then you're like oh yeah i have like 10 of those every (laughs) single day and i'm like what anyway it's 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 one of those things where i was very lucky i'm i am very lucky and i was in remission for a long time and i found a medication that worked apparently not anymore so much but um you know a lot of people can never get into remission so props to you if that's the case and keep the good keep fighting the good fight anyway i'm so sorry to everyone you'd all deserve a hug unless you don't want one Unless you don't want one. Everyone then... with Crohn's deserves a hug. And anyone... What was the one that we said, uh, even, you said, was it you or me or one of us said like, because it was IBD Awareness Day or something. And we were like, give somebody, or you said, give someone with IBD a hug. And I was like, but like, don't actually touch them. <laughs> but don't <laughs> squeeze I don't remember. Them. Just think about hugging them really hard. Uh, no. Okay. <clears throat> so... Sorry. Let's do this. Oh, wait. I also want to add, um, we have a patron of the week. Thank you for always being on top of that. Because I'm so sorry. I, oh. You really just carry the entire I, goddamn show no, in your no, back. No, 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 no. I just always forget. Um, this is... Uh, our patron of the week is Trey Bassa. Okay. Hi, Trey. Trey. What a cool name. Isn't that the guy in um, High School Musical? Or am I making that up? Trey? Zach Efron? No, but it wasn't one of the characters named Trey. Troy? Troy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who played by Zac Efron? But I'm sick. Uh, I'm going to use that as an excuse now for everything. Trey Belton. I um, have an ulcer. Okay. Uh, Trey, thank you for... You're cooler than Zac Efron. Rumor has it, fun fact, that Trey Songs lives... That's the one I'm thinking of. You're thinking of Trey Songs because I complain about him a lot because... You do. Trey Songs, I don't know... Do you guys know who that is? Because I know who that is, but I feel like it's such a random reference. He was not necessarily a one-hit wonder, but maybe like a three-hit wonder. Or maybe like a three-hit half wonder. 
Mm. Is that rude? Probably. If, if he's listening, I'm so sorry. I'm sure he's not. But Trey Songs uh, lives in my apartment. That's right. And not under in, the bed. <laughs> not in my like a specific one, but in my complex. He sings in the shower a lot. He does make a lot of fucking noise. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Or at least the people between us. Is that the one Allison was telling me that like they seem to always be wrestling and like, I don't there's know a baby, the... but the baby's the quietest one. That's why I fucking drink. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to like obviously like triangulate my location here but i live in a complex there are multiple floors on the corner oh we're not gonna go there <laughs> i was like I, I dare you do you think that i actually know your where you live i'm so yes. geographically challenged i, I have think... to like google map it every time um so uh trey songs lives on the top floor in the penthouse <laughs> Uh, obviously. And lives in the swankiest of all apartment buildings. I don't. I don't live in the penthouse. I I live in a like a decent apartment. I have a pretty nice apartment. I love your apartment. And um, but there's a floor between me and Trey Songs. Ah. Oh. And we actually just sent. So I've been recording them, uh, since January every night because they're so goddamn loud and to a point where i've walked out of our apartment before and been like, I don't know where I'm going, but I cannot be in this apartment. They're so stupid loud. Whoa. And um. I, I like to blame it on Trey songs because that's cooler. Um, <laughs> but really, it's just like a family of, I don't know, 15,000 people. And they all like are part of a marching band with 10 babies. <laughs> and <laughs> I love Allison was like, oh, they have a baby. And I went, oh, and she's like, and it's the only one that doesn't. The make baby noise. knows when quiet hours it's are so funny. And like they are so goddamn loud. And I've even I've turned into like Mr. Heckles because I will that's literally Mr. throw Heckles. the broom on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Like I bang the broom on the ceiling all the time. And it just makes them get louder. I'm sure I piss them off. I don't. But so I've been filming them every night. And apparently our landlord sent us an email by accident because. The oh, I heard about this. Sent, they sent us an, e an email by accident thinking that because we're the floor directly under, the digits are the same. Right, right, right. And so uh, they sent an email meant for them to us saying like, so you've been getting a lot of noise complaints from neighbors surrounding you. I just wanted to remind you that like we have quiet hours. You need to be respectful of that. And I chimed in real quick and I was like, actually, we're the floor below. But while we're on the subject, here are 87 <laughs> videos I have recorded of Here's them being wildly a full loud. TikTok account of every 90 second video oh, of them. They're uh, well, so I said they were being really loud. I listed every single thing. I'm a night owl, so I was like, at least until 3.30 in the morning, they're doing this, 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 and this every 10 goddamn minutes. And you're awake, so it's like you're not even trying to sleep. You're just like, it's so fucking loud. I, yeah, it's awful. And so I said, I have also recorded a lot of videos of this in case you need further evidence. And she, I thought she wasn't going to go for it. No. And then our landlord was like, can you please send those videos? And I was like, happily, because... Allison has been making fun of me for recording those videos, being like, what are you going to do with them? And then all of a sudden I get asked to use them. And send I was them like, to the police, the <laughs> FBI. I wish I could. I wish I could arrest those people. They're so fucking I'm loud. Send them to the CIA. Um, anyway, Trey Songs lives in my Trey apartment. Trey Songs apparently has 14 million followers on Twitter, which I did not realize was a thing. <laughs> We're such assholes. Do you even know who that is? I'm sorry. I feel rude because I think I'm just not cool. So I was like, I know somebody. And then I was like, I don't know. I don't have a gauge for what's cool or not. But I will say also, apparently he had an album called tray day oh shit which is just the coolest thing i ever well now did every here. time my neighbors are loud i'm just gonna text you and be like it's tray day <laughs> feel like mr studio <laughs> girl is just going crazy it's up there tray night okay that's that's great christine um i <laughs> i you should just blast his album really loud although i guess technically it is like not technically him right but it's i hope because we're not slandering him we, oh no i mean we are but we're not meaning to i would certainly like to for fun of it but i have never met him he seems real oh he's very ripped so he has that going for him uh i hope that his floor is as loud as my ceiling is considering we're sandwiching this really awful family interesting yeah okay moving on to the, the actual show okay thank you trey for being a patreon supporter <laughs> and not being as loud as my neighbors the other trey um who i could talk about them forever so <laughs> i really you know what let's <laughs> <I'm> just kidding <laughs> Oh, Everyone yeah, yeah, just yeah. like held their breath and was like <laughs> hitting the next button on Spotify. Like Everyone never was like 15 seconds further. Do you know what I sometimes wonder is like if people actually I wonder this constantly. If people are like, no, 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 let me show you this podcast. I love it. And they start listening and they're like, it's not always like this. <laughs> or maybe it is. And they find it every time they try a new episode. They're like, oh, every episode they have to defend. Yeah. Like, oh, it, I promise in 20,000 minutes it gets better. OK. You know what? You guys said that you liked our banter. And Why? so Why? here we go. OK. Moving on. Here is the actual story. Have you read my notes yet? Have you seen what I'm covering? No, I did okay. not. Shocking. Uh, because I I actually I'm not shocked because you would have verbally made a sound. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, we'll see. I've been 
also staring and screaming at the camera so long that the ring light has actually, I think, uh, temporarily blinded me this time. Dope. Like, okay. not even as a joke. So I could not, even if I wanted to, see. Uh, great. What is it? Now I'm curious. So, last week, we talked about the Thunderbird. Right. And the Thunderbird, one of the theories is that it is what? A big fucking giant bird? No. Alligator. Wait. Dinosaur. What is one of the theories of what it could be? Not a dinosaur. The thing that you no. ranted about. It's not Mandela effect. Yes. You're kidding. Is that why you're being so weird about it? Yeah. I was like, Emma, I thought you'd want to talk about this. And then you kept being like, anyway, shut it down, Christine. <laughs> well, because you were also you were saying, like, I don't believe in the Mandela and the Mandela effect. And I was like, and then well, I said, and I said, I'm I about to talk about to it. To be fair, I said, I can't wait for you to cover it because um, we'll have a lot to talk about. So, <laughs> well, you said something about how like you're not like a big believer in it. And so I instantly was like, bullshit. Well, Cause that's, well, yeah, but I've I'm always been very open about that. I've argued with my brother and people on Reddit in my head. I don't actually argue with people on Reddit. I was like, well, how far, <laughs> how dedicated are you? I absolutely believe in the Mandela effect. Oh, that's... this will be fun. I know. I think it's, I, <laughs> all right, get your boxing gloves out. <laughs> it's fun. No, I think it's a uh, fascin. I think it's like deeply fascinating. Like I, I would love, I love talking about it. Yes. And also I, I do think that there is something psychological that creates, like, I mean, it, it seems to be a, like across the, across the globe, like, everyone seems to have these like misconceptions yeah. that are all understood communally. Like it's, there's gotta be something to and, it. And like willingly, I admit I've like been in that same boat where I'm like, no, for sure. I know that. But I like, AKA I, last episode the, in the Thunderbird. Thunderbirds. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm, I haven't even really gotten a chance to be like, holy shit. I'm so excited for you to cover this. Cause I am amped. Okay, great. Yes. So, oh my God. um, and this is a little more to me, this is going to be fun. It's going to be a little different than more. No, most of my stories so some people might hate that some people might enjoy it the reason it's different is because half of my story is just going to be us Examples. playing the game yes oh fun guys come on let's play so everyone shout at your radios as if you <laughs> think we can hear you i like how you say radio like we're on like <laughs> oh sorry your phonograms <laughs> phonograms i don't even know how to pronounce it okay your typewriter how does this work i don't know <laughs> scream into the air and that's calling somebody we'll hear you um so the Mandela effect. I'm trying to actively say Mandela effect because I used to say Mandela effect and then someone yelled at me that it's actually the Mandela effect, but it is the Mandela no, effect. And yeah, I remember this because one time we said it and you said Man Mandela and I went, you know, I got it's screamed about at and then I felt stupid. No, it's about Nelson Mandela. Yes. Everybody. I'm not telling you. I know that you know, but whoever yelled at you. Yeah, I maybe know. they have their they own shamed, Mandela effect. Maybe they shamed me. And then I'm, and so now I've On taught Twitter? myself to say Mandela effect and I know it's wrong. I don't know where. Someone in real life said it to me, though, That's, because I... It's probably, probably fucking Trey songs. <laughs> he sang it. Like, <laughs> Mr. Mandela. Whoa. Nope. Okay. Whoa. Is that your Lady Gaga? You're about saying, no, like... No, the um, song Bottoms Up by Trey songs. Oh, I thought you were going to sing... You um, were going to roast me without even having any goddamn sing information. Bad romance. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's where I thought we were going. We should cover eventually an episode about, like, the, um, the similarities in songs. Mm, how it's where like, it's, like, the same... The same chords, or whatever. yeah. Um, I thought you were gonna say we should cover bad romance, and I was like, we absolutely should. We should cover should not. Madame Gaga. Madame That's, Gaga, who, by the way, uh, for those wondering what she's like, uh, if you want a little Hollywood inside scoop, oh, Lady Gaga is a goddamn delight. Have you met her? Gaga damn light. Wow, that's good, Em. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I'll... the dogs are disagreeing with you. Or agreeing. no, I, I they like her meat dress or whatever. I've only heard wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things about her. Oh, I thought you met her though. You have not met her. I have not personally Shit. met her, but when I worked at the prop house, someone told a prop master who was working on American Horror Story with her came <gasps> in, cool, and told me that one of the PAs um, on set uh, came in crying one day because oh. their house had been like broken into and someone stole everything. Oh my God. And so she came in crying. One of the makeup and hair people were like talking about it while they were doing like Gaga's hair. Mm. And so I don't know if this is true, but this is the story that I heard and I want to perpetuate it. Lady <sighs> Gaga gave her assistant her personal credit card and said, go get her one of everything. And so by the time that PA got back home, she had like an Apple TV and a laptop and like all these things. Lady Gaga, I've been robbed too. <laughs> Help me. Trey Songs took all of my stuff. Help me. No, he I'm took just... my goddamn sleep because I'm definitely awake all <laughs> night that's, long. Well, that's lovely. Yeah. So I don't know if that's true, but I heard it from someone who ha like was working with her and like yeah. I heard about it the day that it happened. I will say like I've never heard anything <clears throat> bad about her, which I feel like 
you tend to hear everything bad about everyone here. So I mean, mm-hmm. that's its own. Uh, uh, yeah, true evidence i guess okay sorry sorry so the mandala effect also i'm looking at you i'm not looking at your nose i promise i just i'm like very excited. you want to look at my baby browns this time i do i know i want to gaze at them my chiseled jaw mm. full of ice cream and pudding so <laughs> sorry why did that make me laugh <laughs> i don't know i always i like to test i like to test Ugh. okay everyone's like please fucking get on with this so <laughs> the mandela effect um if you did not listen to our last episode i kind of did a quick little spark notes on it um we were talking about the Thunderbird and how one of the ideas, uh, one of the uh, most common stories and references of the Thunderbird is that there were two ranchers who shot something down. And now there's this historical famous picture of six men holding up a Thunderbird in front of a barn. And it's like in sepia and everyone has seen it in one way or another, or at least a lot of people have to a point where everyone swears that this picture exists. Right. And yet this picture never existed. It only existed after everybody had talked about it in such detail that someone created a picture yeah, and, and like, then it affirmed ev- what everyone had said they'd seen. Right. And I remember this is actually one of the only ones I read on Reddit. And I was like, no, I know exactly that picture. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. I'm finally like sucked into this thing. <laughs> yeah. So it basically a uh, Mandela effect is a a collective false memory. So everyone seems to remember something that definitely without a doubt happened. You're convinced of it. Mm-hmm. And then you find out that it's not true and you're like it's hard to even like shake yourself out of it you're like no this did happen yeah a thousand percent yeah. happened. so a lot of people actually also equate it to deja vu of being like i mm. know this happened and you cannot be convinced otherwise it's happened before right exactly wow. so <laughs> the mandela effect or a mass memory discrepancy effect wow is uh somewhat recent it's all i mean it's always kind of been a thing but it was never coined as the Mandela effect until 2008. Right. Um, by a paranormal investigator. Really? Named Fiona Broom. Well, that's a great name. It's, it sounds fake. It's like Fiona Apple, but like the knockoff version. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Fiona Orange. Oh, sorry. That's Fiona Pineapple. What are you talking about? So uh, Fiona Broom was at a conference when the discussion turned to Nelson Mandela's death. And this was in 2008. Um, so this is the beginning of the actual coined phrase mm, Mandela okay. effect. Okay. She was at a conference when the discussion turned to Nelson Mandela's death and uh, Fiona and others at the conference were like, no, no, no. Like Mandela died in prison in the eighties. Like we know this, we remember televised eulogies. We remember right. the funeral proceedings. Like, like everybody knows that like, we know what happened, but found out at this conference that Nelson Mandela was freed from prison in 1990 and actually died in 2013 whoa so, oh, like, so he was alive he when was, they were talking about it yeah he was like oh, gonna be alive for five more years when she was like no he's dead he must have been so pissed when this was named after him he's like god i'm a, what else do you want me to do like i'm right for five here. years he was like well i guess i created a psychological disorder <laughs> you're um, welcome reddit by the way so uh so fiona later that night was like in shock and went turned to the chat rooms of course of course and was like Does anyone else like remember him absolutely dying for sure <laughs> And so at, then realized that so many people across the world were like, he's dead. He died in prison in the 80s. And Nelson Mandela's probably like, what is going on? Why are my ears ringing? Yeah, somewhere he's like getting all those Google notification pings. <laughs> like suddenly he's trending on Google again. I hope to think he also looked like Google's himself like oh, we do. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like we clearly do as of last episode. So it became the Mandela effect and it went viral overnight, it seems. And neuroscientists, psychologists, physicists, conspiracy theorists all started looking into it, trying to figure out a reason for for why this one thing alone started like threw right. people for a total loop. And by 2014, there was actually a, a subreddit called Mandela effect. That is now the largest community on Reddit with more than a hundred. Is it really? I think, uh, I think so. Yeah. It's at least one of the largest. It has 120,000 subscribers. Uh, I think in 2014 in that year, it got 120, like it, got it, got it got blew it. up. Yeah. Now it's probably not the biggest, but I think when it came out in 2014. I think like the ATWWD podcast one is a little bigger. Okay. Well. <laughs> no, the actual, the, Man- the Mandela effect is uh, them being like, is that even really a podcast? Uh, we remember a really lovely time when it didn't exist. So it blew up and since 2014, the Mandela effect subreddit has existed. It's one of the biggest ones on Reddit. It was one of the first ones I joined when I joined Argu- Arguably one of the biggest ones, yeah. I would, or if not the biggest one. At least in my experience. It's the biggest one I'm a part of. <laughs> um... So people in here obviously discuss examples and theories and personal experiences of this Mandela effect happening to them. Right. And there's so many theories. 
Um, they're all kind of eerie or theory. Uh, do you guys know that reference? Or is that also a Mandela effect? Now I don't even know anymore. Maybe someone out there genuinely thinks we have a show called Eerie and Theory. Maybe we do. Is that the Mandela effect? Oh, Wait a minute. shit. Let me look at my shirt. <laughs> oh, no. We're good. We're still... Are we both? Oh, no, we're not. I was wearing an And That's Why I Drink sweatshirt earlier. I did notice that. We're uh, really on brand. Truly, my entire closet is just my own clothes. Do you realize that we were talking about, and Trey Songs is in there too, but yeah, we were talking <laughs> about, like last time, last episode, we were talking about Googling ourselves. In fact, we were Googling ourselves while wearing shirts with our fucking names on them. Like how? We are just. What is wrong with us? I don't know. I'm so Something. sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. <sighs> sorry. Let's go back to your thing. Okay. Um, I was going to try to come up with a reason. Oh, I was oh, oh. Psychologically analyzing myself. I don't know. We could get back to that. Could be its own conversation. That's a great episode. Therapy 101 with us. Oh, Lord. So there are so many theories from psychology to metaphysics, all these things. Mm. So here are just some of the most popular. So the first one is the uh, CERN super collider. In 2017, it was suggested that the uh, Mandela effect is actually the result of a particle accelerator in Switzerland. Oh, yeah. I remember this thing. That caused a rip in our reality what year was that 2017 what so they think um, oh that everything that was the year our podcast started <laughs> wait hold a, on wait a minute holy shit oh my god I, i'm still sleeping in our class somewhere in boston university it's <laughs> just on the desk <laughs> and then i wake up to this stranger hey, named christine next that to must me be nice i'm still fucking working in that class i'd rather be sleeping <laughs> i should have made better decisions you definitely got the a in the class i definitely <laughs> got a lot of z's in the class you're such Ayo. an idiot. So uh, that's excellent. I think I that was on the spot too. I was uh, I was actually really into that one. Felt like that one should have stayed in my pocket a little longer. Should have it could have landed differently. I so, liked it. Uh, yeah. So that argument to me doesn't make too much sense because if it happened in 2017, it means there was nine years where people still thought Nelson Mandela was dead. Oh. And also, really, since the 80s, and then in 2017, this happened. So it doesn't explain everything that happened before. or maybe it did and then in 2017 everything like reality like altered now, itself right now we think it's been we're in a new timeline oh we're in a new reality where this actually did happen in the end right okay sure <laughs> so uh there's also on reddit a lot of uh theories that come off of the cern super collider ripping a hole in our reality that led to trump being president just just so we know. Interesting. A lot of shit happened in that 2016, 2017. They're like, in this world, Mandela's alive, but Trump's president. So anyway. Which one? Which how? Which path do we choose? <laughs> so another theory is the holodeck or the matrix theory. Sure. Uh, which is a big theory. I wake up every day and wonder if it's true. Me too. Is that we are in an alternate or a virtual reality. Yeah. And the program or energy source that runs this reality we're in has a couple glitches. So it never got all the facts like right. Literally glitches in the matrix, essentially. So these glitches cause the Mandela effects and also concepts like deja vu, where it's like, oh, I remember something happening, but it didn't happen or, yeah. oh, so Nelson Mandela's alive, but he's supposed right. to be dead. It's sort of like close to your own reality, but like off a little bit. It's maybe? almost like you like something is like split, literally glitching. It's like, I know <sighs> something's off. I love how Nelson Mandela is like the <laughs> the core focus of this glitch. Just like, let's choose him. <laughs> but so wait, is this different? And you're probably going to get into it, but like parallel, that's different. Oh, we're gonna get into it okay never mind so there's another theory a personal favorite because it's a, another thing i think about every single day is the time travel and butterfly effect theory mm. which is that our collective <gasps> oh. oh i'm just like i didn't think about this one before is that our collective false memories are not false at all but time travelers are altering the past and we are now living in this altered timeline that they've created so they could have done it intentionally maybe the government wants us to believe something else happened or maybe it was totally incidentally that based... So if you don't know what the butterfly effect is, it's the theory that um, you can do one tiny thing differently. If you were to go back in time or change time, you could incidentally, like, kick a rock when you're, like, walking on the street. And it, had you not been there, that rock was going to stay in one spot. But if you, now that you've kicked that rock, now someone's car might drive over it, and then they get in a car crash. And, like, so the right, whole right, timeline right. changes like because of... There's a ripple effect of one small, tiny little thing you didn't even notice. And it's based on like butterfly, like a flap of a... The flap of tiniest, the wings. The tiniest thing can like yeah. shift. Yes. Wow. Um, and so... I never thought about it. Uh, so they think if maybe time travelers are doing some, are on some other task, they incidentally um, 
did one thing that made a ripple effect and now this is like some weird altered <sighs> timeline that they never like fully closed out of or you know what's interesting too is like if if which i believe like listen i'm with you i think time travel it could very well be reality but i yes. think it is um but like if time travel were a reality i would think that they would be so careful to like not shift anything i would imagine you need at least 10 years in like a strict Training. academy yeah. like of like you cannot do any of these things and my thought is like if you were to go back and these mandela effect things are so small that my thought is like maybe it was just the tiniest little thing that caused like and that's why it's so that's why it's almost so like it doesn't affect our real lives right. in a major way because it was such a small right. accidental hiccup. That accidentally killed or oh well <laughs> avoided killing Mandela. <laughs> but yeah. like yeah it's like something that's so far removed that's from us that it, it's not important enough for us to really investigate why we feel that way right but because maybe it was just like a quick little oops and a time travel quest yeah yeah uh it could also be a location theory where um this all just comes from shifts in vile vortexes what? or vile vortices and so uh basically areas around the world that uh, have consistent magnetic and gravitational anomalies <gasps> Um, th there's one in the Bermuda Triangle, one, mm. there's in the North and South Poles, there's megaliths in, um, Africa and on Easter Island. Interestingly, Ivan T. Sanderson, the guy <gasps> involved with the Minnesota Iceman, and he had yeah. something to say about the Thunderbirds in the last episode, uh, he coined the term vile vortex. This motherfucker has something to say about everything. It He's seems. like all up in my business. Vile vortex? Mm-hmm. Like, v we'll cover it eventually. How do you spell vile? V-I-L-E. Oh, I was thinking vile, like a vi like a container, but like vile, like evil? it's some it's on my notes it's for the future it's probably a word that i just don't know sorry I will, I will refer to this in the future okay, don't worry great but uh not in this not in, not today but i have vile vortex um as a not topic today ivan not today nice try unless we're time traveling hmm. who could say um but so they think that maybe um there's just anomalies that like either cross over each other and cause glitches or mm. anything like that. There could also be the multiverse theory, which I'm a big believer of. Me too. Um, it's a quantum physics theory that potentially there are an infinite amount of universes that all exist at the exact same time, mm -hmm. AKA parallel universes. And there are some, the ones that are closest to our universe are so similar, but there could be only like one microscopic right. difference that even we don't really notice. Right. But they all, over time, if you build them all out, are totally... Like, infinite, infinitely go inf on. Like, there could be a totally... The exact same world, except, like, that chair is green. Like, yeah. it's, like... And the idea, I think, is, like, if, say, you turn left instead of right, then it splits off into its own mm -hmm. uh, different choice. Every choice you make, same, similar to both, but... Like, it's always, it's always growing. Right. And so every single thing that happens is, like, building new parallel... And I, th I think there's, like, other things where people believe you can shift through them by accident if you are, are, like, in a traumatic crash or something. I've read stories where people think they shift. Accidentally jump into a reality next door. And they're like, I swear to God, my cat didn't even look. Like, it was a different color. Like, shit like that where it's, well, like, something's off. If you look, there's a lot of multiverse experiences that people will post in, like, Glitch in the yeah, Matrix yeah, subreddit yeah, 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 yeah. where they'll be, like, I... There, my favorite one is someone... I might actually cover it at some point because it was so good and so detailed. But this guy swears that he was like 26 yes. married oh, with kids this one disturbs me to no end and then one day he like and he like had a job with like it was either finance or science or computer engineering like, engineering and he had like he remembers everything the day how he met his wife like all the dates they went on meeting her family like i mean he remembered his entire fucking life and then one day he like woke up or was in a car crash and he was like 14 again with all the information that he had learned up until what he thought was current time and so he ended up starting getting like all these like really good grades in like his computer classes because he was he was a computer engineer right. and he was 14 again and he went through like a really deep depression because he was like i had a whole life and all yeah. of a sudden i went backwards and now i have to like, oh, yeah redo and he everything. tried to like find his wife who was like also 14 at this time but like didn't know where to find her like it was like it was but it was it's a creepy read like if it's, it's not real if it's either way it's terrifying it's really scary and like the thought honestly haunts me <laughs> so he thinks he kind of just like jumped into like an alternate reality or something by accident where he's hasn't aged yet or he like went back in time or something oh. anyway the multiverse theory uh and how it Im is involved with the mandela effect is that um mandela effects or collective false memories are real but in a parallel universe nearby it's actually true mm. so the only thing different in that world might be this one fact and Got sometimes it. when those worlds accidentally cross over then all of a sudden oh. your 
uh, that information got retained in our minds right. from another world that and then we remember it as different we kind of vaguely remember something that wow. we weren't supposed to know because it's not part of this world Whoa. then there's the just concept of suggestibility that people have a tendency to believe other people's memories and right. so under social pressure when you're trying to recall something um, you, your brain is just has a tendency to try to fill in, mm -hmm. um, information when it doesn't really know the full picture. Right. And so when misinformation is introduced as real, like if I came up with half of a story and I'm like, remember that, remember that, remember that you're kind of pressured to remember I'm it like, sure, and, wasn't and there create thing? it in your head. Right. And so your brain tries to link it into existing memories. And so you're this kind is of my personal belief about Mandela effects. I will say like just my hand the raised. suggestibility theory this is my closest uh understanding of what i think it is i mean it's also it's probably from a psychological right. standpoint it makes full sense have you seen those study i mean i'm sure you have you studied psych but like the the study where they had a, a couple actors and then like an actual test subject in a room and they showed like two lines or two squares or something and they were like which one's bigger and everyone in the oh, room yeah. said the smaller line was bigger and then the final guy just, just points at it he he's went, like yeah me too because he didn't want to be like and it's the same one and they it was totally planted like several it's like clearly not the right answer but so many other people said it that he just went with it it's like a social it's like a peer pressure yeah, study like but you don't want to be out anyway i know it's kind of different but my no, thought no, no, is but it's i mean that's exactly the point of like you're just if you're doing positive reinforcement on false right. information then people under social pressure are going to follow it and there's so many studies that like witnesses get details wrong colors of cars how fast they were going and it's so easy to suggest like it's like if you ask about a car crash witnesses at a car crash you say how fast was the car speeding they're more likely to say it was a higher rate if you say how yeah, fast all those was like the car little, driving like, like not saying it like trigger words like yeah. they were like literally like phrases trigger words at the time yeah suggesting and different anyway yeah yeah, yeah. no i mean the it's just so interesting to me <laughs> the way that a story is framed right. easily influences someone's decision making and, and every time you tell a story you're just rewriting it like you're not actually yeah. remembering it and so things get so shifted so quickly okay i'm so sorry no no, no. but so when you think <laughs> and i'm gonna get into this a little bit later but when you think now about the inclusion of the internet like oh, if sure. you're rewriting a story and you post it somewhere and one second hundreds of people can have read it and then rewritten it in their own brains to then tell a new version yep. of it to someone else so i'm gonna get into that in a second fascinating but, okay so there's also uh the theory uh or the concept of uh reconsolidation and confabulation so like i said your brain just tries to fill in missing pieces right. um to give its like best guess of a whole memory right. um and that being said there is the interesting thought of like um I guess the best way to phrase it is when you when your neurons are encoding information and trying to figure out where it's going to store itself, there could be like a filing cabinet with a lot of like minded things oh. next to each other, where now if you retain a different piece of information, if it's filed somewhere in the same filing cabinet, now they've combined themselves. So if you think oh. there's been a lot of studies where not I wouldn't say a lot of studies, but there's been enough where it's been proven that. A weird amount of people instantly think Alexander Hamilton is a president or a former president. Right. And it's like uh, for I would say the the general population uh, doesn't really think about history all the time. Right. And it's easy to if you had a filing cabinet of history and historical figures right. and people involved in either the founding fathers or the presidency. Or like stuff I learned in high school. <laughs> all of that kind of goes in the same spot. So uh... when you're when your brain was learning about Alexander Hamilton and then right. also learning about founding fathers and the constitution and oh that kind of fits in with history and politics and presidents. And like Ben then, Franklin, everyone thinks he's a president. Exactly. So if, like even Ben Franklin. So if you think about those uh, if you always think about those two topics at the same time or in the same way, oh. eventually you think about it long enough for your neurons to build like a strong enough connection to the same to like that's combine them so interesting and like our brains love patterns like that's how yeah, exactly. we function in reality so like it would make sense that it would be like yep that's easy yeah so <laughs> like-minded things often get stored together and become their own memory wow so i wonder if that's why nelson mandela it was conflated with like death and like maybe violence and people were like oh yeah i don't know if that's too much of a stretch but i mean who knows <laughs> the human mind is bananas it's so crazy so it's now noodles we're just i i guess i'll 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 finish out like the information first before we play the game but he, like i said earlier now with the advent of the internet and ai technology and 
like just the evolution of human communication like now you're talking to hundreds of people at one time mm-hmm. and like telling your stories to hundreds of people at one time there are like photoshoppers and deep fakes sure. and what's a deep fake so it's basically kind of you can overlay like there's one really good deep fake that's going around right now of Robert Downey Jr. and Tom Holland, Iron Man and Spider-Man, yeah, yeah. overlaid on top of Marty McFly and Doc Brown. And so it looks like Robert Downey Jr. and Tom Holland were, like, the stars of Back to the Future. Oh. Like, they, like, found a way to, like, put their faces on th- those bodies. And so they have a whole scene of them, like, it looks like they're acting. Oh, like video, actually. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's, like, uh, the fact that people are, the fact that there's internet and stories can be spread so much easier now and things can go viral so often and people are getting so good at altering right. and doctoring information. Um, it's so much easier for false realities and false memories to be created. Sure. So it's kind of a negative implication of the Mandela effect that as technology Im- increases and uh, or as it grows and gets better, there is an argument for like, well, then the Mandela effect is going to get more and more dangerous because you can just create oh ew like people with the wrong intentions can like yeah put seeds in your mind oh yeah. oh no you can just like tell anyone anything and if it gets viral and enough people believe it remember coney 2012 or whatever no it, it was kind of one of those things probably one of the first versions of this yes it was sort of like that and then it turns out it was all bullshit and everyone looked like an idiot because it was like <laughs> well i mean so as as technology improves the argument is that more people are going to be able to from the like comfort of their own couch, create a false memory out of thin air for people to believe, thus creating false history, thus creating false reality. Fake news. And thus, which is already happening in the form of no! fake news. <laughs> so according to uh, one poll by Stephen Frenda at Cal State, people are more likely to believe, and this is kind of, I, this is one poll, but it's also, it makes a lot, it's a very common sense argument that, People are more likely to believe in information, even if it's blatant misinformation, if it fits their worldview. Uh Aha, yeah, sure. So, example, if you're a liberal or conservative and you see a doctored picture in favor of your views, you're less likely to kind of investigate what, like, the the validity of it. That makes sense. So, as deep fakes and uh, people who are doctoring information or videos or pictures or, like, that whole, like, Facebook scam where, like like oh, genuine yeah. <laughs> false information was being put out there and people were feeding into it and then like yeah. voting because like anyway yeah, yeah 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 so as it becomes more advanced that's scary ex- exhibit a um falsehoods will become more and more difficult to decipher and so now philosophers are like when what is the universal truth then oh. because if everything is potentially a false memory at some point because you can't there's no that's laws preventing this fascinating thought if there's if there's no one stopping it from happening and everyone has the ability to do it, like tomorrow there could be five really big pieces of information that are false and everyone's going to believe and it. If you believe it, does that make it like if everyone believes something is true? Like, yeah, is that it gets, now the truth? It gets really uh, metaphysical and philosophical very quickly wow. because at some point, if there's so many fake pieces of information under a collective false understanding, it could lead to the collapse of reality fun so that being said let's try to actually make it fun and here are some examples so we play games instead (laughs) we uh distract you so i i have a huge list here but i'm just gonna pick through some of them okay so uh hmm does curious george have a tail no he does not have a tail Oh, yeah. But, but a lot of people think he does because he's a monkey. But also, I could picture it either way, you know? Like, I don't think so, but he could? He could. I it mean, does feel like he kind of does. You but. feel like he should. It's kind of... Okay, here's another... Here's a very good example, which I did not put on this list, but the episode of The Office when everyone's like, does Stanley have a mustache? Yes. Oh, my God. Exactly. And nobody can figure it out. It's like, no, he definitely has a mustache. And it's like, no, he does not. And then they, like, try to draw it and, like, figure out... <laughs> nobody can remember. And they sit right next to him. It's... it's That's exactly... Yeah. That's about it. You could picture it either way. Um, so a, a common one is that the show Sex in the City is sex and the city, although everyone thinks it's sex in the city. Oh, yeah. So it is and it's sex and the I city. I never really watched it, so I feel like I shouldn't participate in that one. But um, that's interesting, too. And there's the one about um, 
conversation with a vampire versus the vampire but like then my, part of me is like well, oh people, interview interview or, sorry interview yeah the the movie with brad pitt and tom cruise it's an interview with the, the vampire. vampire but those i those i like kind of nitpick because it's right? like well people are saying it so quickly with the and if if so many people say it and don't like and read it real fast and don't think well, it, about it's it. like natural language to right. kind of slur your words to get through something fast so here we'll try something else okay a common another common one is that the flintstones which i I, I also was blown away by, which I shouldn't have been because it makes total sense, but it's spelled Flint Stones. And I always thought it was just the Flintstones. No, it's the other way. Everyone thinks it's Flint Stones, but it's Flint Stones. No, it's Flint Stones. Are you sure? I just looked this up. You're kidding. No, it's like, I correct people on this all the time, really. I'm, you want to look it up? It's no, the, I mean, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Well, it makes sense because Flint. Like, of course no, I know, but would. that's why I thought everybody thought that's what it was. No, I always thought it was wow. Flintstones, and then I was blown away by the fact that it's the Flintstones. Oh, no, I don't even have service. Uh, another one is Double Stuff Oreos. There's the S-T-U-F. It's one F, right. not two Fs. Double oh, my God, stuff. you're right. Oh, my God, you're right. Okay, wow, now I'm really thrown for a loop. <laughs> Okay, now you're right. You're right. I'm freaking out because that really is a big one that I was convinced was yep. Flintstones and then everyone was saying it wrong or spelling it wrong. Another one is uh, Whiteout is spelt without the H. It's yeah. It's W-I-T-E out. Another is uh, Chick-fil-A. Everyone seems to not know how to spell Chick-fil-A or they all think it's one way and then you find out that it's C-H-I-C-K filet. Right. I always think it's C-H-I-C. I was the, I always used to think it was C H I K because I know there was a K in there because I remember the cows always spelling it. Oh, and I was like, it's spelling it wrong. No one can figure out that it's a C and a K. Um, Oscar Mayer. A lot of people don't know that it's Oscar M A M A Y E R instead of M E Y E R. Febreze only has one E. Do people think? See, there's some of them. I'm like, oh, but I knew that. But I think it's. I had no idea about Febreze. That one fucked me up. Really? Well, because it. Well, you would think it's breeze, like breeze, like two E's. I don't know. I guess. Yeah. Okay. We're going to find Maybe one Maybe I just never thought up. of it as a word. Yeah. Fine. Well, Flintstones has already thrown me for a loop. Another common one is Berenstain Bears. Okay. This one, I actually have a big thing to talk about. <laughs> oh, okay. First of all, I never... Berenstain, it's spelled like S-T-E-I-N, not S-T-A. No, no. It's the other way. It's, per, it's spelled Berenstain Bears, even though you pronounce it Berenstain Bears. This one, I know, because everyone's like, it's not Berenstain Bears. That's not a thing. <laughs> Let's see. Look I bet you're right. Here, you, this one I just, you said you have a thing, so... Okay, so, well, I just want to make sure I'm right before I just fucking go off about it. Berenstain Bears. Right, so it's spelled with an A. Yeah, I always thought it was the Berenstain. Oh. I thought they were Jewish. Yeah, so Baron, So everyone thinks it's Berenstain, and then they're, like, all, like, yelling about it. It's spelled... And that's one of the biggest ones. That's, like, one of the biggest People Mandela freak effects. I freaked out. I was like, what the hell? But here's my thing, okay? First of all, it was in the 90s. Everyone on our, everyone our age, millennials on Reddit being, like, you know, Mandela effect... We were children. You pronounced it Berenstein Bears, so like you probably didn't look at a full word like Berenstein and like yeah, so you would think figure Eve, out Berenstein. how it's spelled. Also, the reason I this one didn't even like phase me is because when I was little, like I was learning English, and so I would like read each letter. And I remember asking my mom like, "Why is it pronounced Berenstein Bears? There's an A," and she's like, "I don't know. That's just how people say it." <laughs> and it's like one of my clear memories. So now I'm like, I think people just because I remember when I was little it being with an A. I and always I, thought I it just, was Berenstein. I know, because that's how you say it, and it makes sense. I just say I don't really, I don't know. That one I remember very clearly from being a kid that it was spelled, quote unquote, wrong in my head. Do you, so another common one is that the 90s movie Shazam starred Sinbad, but there was no movie called Shazam, and Sinbad did not act in it. There was a movie called Kazam starring Shaq. Yeah, but I, I don't know about this. Oh, I was convinced for years Shazam. It's so weird. That, that one, one I, can, I can understand because Shaq and Shazam, oh, you combine them by accident. And Kazam. Yeah, okay, I see. But I was convinced. Um, That's a big one that I've heard people... For. I don't I don't really know about either of those, so I'm not... Also, Smokey the Bear is not named Smokey the Bear. His name's Smokey Bear. Um, oh. They're apparently um, in the risky business scene of Tom Cruise sliding across the floor. He's not wearing Ray-Ban glasses, which I always think he do is He's wearing... Not? Yeah, he's not wearing them when he's sliding through. What is he? Oh, he's just not wearing sunglasses. He's just not wearing sunglasses, but I always assume he's wearing glasses. Me too. C-3PO is not entirely gold. Um, Darth Vader never said, Luke, I am your father. What? Um, there, at the end of the song, We Are the Champions, there is no of the world. No. Oh, this one was debunked, though. I just read this. Oh. Because there's a live version 
Oh. I'm, pre- I'm almost positive there's a live version where they do say it. I'm, I'm Maybe I'm making that up, but I've, I read that somewhere, and it could just be bullshit, but I did read that there's a live version. Interesting. But, but I don't know if that's true. It, that one also threw me for a loop, because I for sure have heard that of the world. Yeah. I mean, maybe someone was at the live show and really made sure everyone else knew about it. I mean, then, that could be bullshit too. Cause then why would I know that, you know, or why would I have thought that? Uh, Looney tunes is not spelled. Uh, the tunes is not spelled T O O N S. I knew this one. This is yeah. T U N E S fruit loops is spelled F R O O T not right. fruit. Um, the monopoly man does not have a monocle. This one's fun. And I think it's because people conflate him with Mr. Peanut. That's I my, think so too. that's my theory on that one. Uh, there's no hyphen in Kit Kat bars. Now th- this one actually threw me big time. Cause this, these are some of the ones, if you go on the subreddit, like it, to everybody else, I'm sure, you know, but like people write out the logos like both ways. Yeah. And so you can, sometimes you'll look at both and be like, I literally don't know which one it is, or it looks like this one or <laughs> and you're wrong. Uh, Hannibal Lecter never said hello, Clarice. Um, what? Pikachu's tail does not have a black tip. This one I knew, especially cause I'm currently in my Pokemon card phase. <laughs> Um, but a lot of people think that he has a black tip on his tail. Huh. Um, Gandalf never shouted, run, you fools, in Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring. He said, fly, you fools. Okay. Which I, a lot of people don't believe. I didn't know that one. A lot of people think that there are 51 or 52 states in the U.S. I don't know how people... I mean, I probably think that because I'm bad at geography, but not because it's a <laughs> Mandela effect. Uh, apparently, Wait, some people are convinced. What do you mean? Like, they're like, I don't know. Like, I think they're confused with, like, states and territories like maybe, or something. Right, like, maybe D.C. they're considering a state? I don't maybe, know. but some people swear to whoever they believe. Okay, well, they just didn't pay attention in geography class. Right? <laughs> um, I feel like it doesn't necessarily work unless, like, a massive number, right? I believe it. Or maybe they're just finding their own group of... Maybe. That's a whole other theory, too, that maybe you just find like-minded people to, like, perpetuate your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Fruit of the Loom never had a basket behind it in its logo. Okay, wait. Which, like, I always thought it did. And that's such a weirdly specific thing, right? I always thought there was, like, a wooden, like, like a a wicker wicker basket behind it. It does not have that. Like, you can picture it. Weird. Weird. Uh, It's Cheez-It, not Cheez-Its. Um... The they never the evil queen in Snow White never said mirror mirror on the wall. She said magic mirror on the wall. Mm. Neil Armstrong died in 2012 and everyone seemed to just not notice. Everyone's still blown away when you say no, he's dead. Yeah, I actually just went to the Apollo 11 thing and I remember Googling it before because I was embarrassed. I was like, I don't even know. Yeah. And well, I had to Google it. Um, and then Mother Teresa was canonized in 2016, although so <gasps> many people swear it was in the 90s. And think she was a saint that whole time. Yeah. Wow. She was just called the saint. But I it guess, happened I in 2016. True, yeah um Lindbergh's baby which you've covered yeah. this before Uh-oh. apparently there's a huge mandela effect nobody remembers that the baby was found dead everyone thinks it was just a cold case uh remember i said in the thing i was like oh i didn't even know that this is how it ended i thought it was an unsolved mystery i said yeah. that in the fucking thing i didn't even know it was a mandela effect. so many people like just totally don't even remember i believe that too in i love lucy ricky never said you have some splaining to do he would say the word splain but wow. the phrase was never said by him. Um, during her Oscar speech, Sally Field never said, you like me, you really like me. She said, I can't deny the fact that you like me right now. You like me. Huh. And then Cruella DeVille, I always spelled, I always thought her last name was spelled D-E-V-I-L-L-E, but it literally is spelled like devil. Really? Uh-huh. Oh, I would have guessed your way too. And then my personal favorite, which really threw me, was that chartreuse apparently ev- everyone that i've ever talked to and me included wait, wait, test me what color is chartreuse green okay i don't know why you know oh. all these it's wait what every- what is it everyone that i, I know I was gonna be wrong. thinks it's magenta i always thought it was pink really always oh i don't always. know i thought i was gonna be wrong i was one. i found that out today when i was doing these notes i was like what do you mean it's fucking green it's like a really neon green it's definitely magenta. Oh my god! What? Okay, this one I didn't know this was a one Mandela. I will, but... I will take it to my grave. Th- okay, I, I will say I think I'll, I'll die on this on this. There's hill. no way. Okay, it's fucking pink. It's clearly not. Okay, I think I think part of it is like I literally did not speak English when I was six, so I think a lot of this I learned later, and it was like I learned it differently. Well, may, I mean that makes sense, but we were all kids when this stuff was happening. Like Fruit Loops is all like when we were kids, and so my thought is like, of course we didn't specifically read the cereal box i don't know look i hope i blew someone's mind but you did i'm not okay don't take offense to it. i'm not like trying I'm, to shit on your story i'm just saying that's oh i'm my not theory. offended at all that's my i'm theory. just saying i 
I was blown to pieces. So if it was just me, I'm very happy with that. But I, I'm not, I'm confused about the 51 or 52 states or territories. Huh. Wait, I don't know why people. <laughs> what if we think, think that? What if we think there are 50 and there are actually 52? No. Well, then I'll, I'm glad I've blown your mind. That can't be right. I, I, I will die knowing that chartreuse is pink and i cannot be convinced wait otherwise. i want to do i didn't i want to ask like I, I did not know that was a a miss i didn't know that someone out there also thought it was green probably and they're right but i definitely think most of us thought it was pink or magenta really okay we should do a poll i'm so curious or i guess it's probably on reddit or whatever some i mean everyone's gonna tweet at us that i'm an idiot for no, thinking it was no, green. No, 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 no they're not they're gonna tweet me for ruining the effect of the story i'm not trying to like deny it i'm just i just think it's there's some of those that like flintstones i was fucking 110 percent convinced i thought everyone was spelling it wrong <laughs> when they even wrote the Flint. flintstones uh i really thought it was flintstones hmm. mm, anyway write in let us know i'm so curious this is like just the wild i think it's fascinating because it's like <sighs> the nelson mandel thing like i thought he was dead like i thought he had died in prison i didn't know many of those i knew a few of them i knew like fruit loops and things like that but they have some good ones too where it's like like i took a quiz and i got it all wrong like they do like logos i'm not saying i'm not like affected by these like most of them i get wrong too i'm just saying like like the ones that are logos where they're like is this the volkswagen logo or is this the volkswagen logo Mm. and you're like no it's definitely this yeah and it's wrong slight differences are very tricky it's creepy it's really creepy the only one i knew for sure was apparently a lot of people think that jiff peanut butter is called jiffy but it's jiff oh. but i knew that i knew that one for sure i think i wonder p- if that's because of skippy yeah i think they mix it with skippy oh, right okay well that goes back to your like drawers thing right like where you have like um you conflate like yeah, yeah similar yeah. ideas you probably just peanut butter is all in one filing cabinet i just am like so fascinated by this there was one that was like ford or something that i got wrong because i drive a ford and i was like i know what the fucking logo looks like and i was completely wrong there's oh. like a swirl in the f yeah there's like a swirl or there's not a swirl i don't even know anymore and people are like convinced it's one or the other i don't know anyway well there's another one right there it's just fascinating i've spent like hours on that i remember trying to convince my brother so desperately that was real i spent hours on that subreddit there is oh i by the way just to like hype it up again there is a subreddit it's uh, so fascinating called mandela mandela effect fuck i like really messed my own brain up i keep calling it mandela that wasn't you that was whoever corrected you incorrectly <sighs> i don't know who it was we anymore just trust but i you guys just know so i much. hate you whoever did that to me <laughs> oh my god anyway that's the man that's like mandela effect. one of my favorite topics ever i never thought about butterfly effect too with it yeah well because you have to first believe in government conspiracies and then believe in time sure. travel existing and then believe Which in I the do. butterfly effect sure yeah it's quite a quite a, a wormhole you have to jump yourself into oh yeah i'm yeah i'm more convinced now that i'm <laughs> wrong i think i just tell myself it's all psychology so i don't break my own brain i I think it scares me i tell myself it's absolutely everything but psychology (laughs) but also psychology but like i i'm desperate to believe in time travel so i've just decided it must be oh yeah i mean i believe and alternate realities and you've already convinced me about time travel i also believe in parallel universes for show oh yeah you should definitely cover the multiverse someday that'd be a big topic though (laughs) there's a reason why i have not done that (laughs) i can't even imagine yeah let me just tell you about every single potential theory and every single potential universe (laughs) in 30 minutes or less oh my god okay yeah talk about breaking your goddamn brain okay um all right now i have a story for you that's like much probably less interesting i'm sorry everybody great it's we'll use the mandela effect and pretend that it was a great story mm, yeah no advance. i mean it's a good story it's a disturbing story and sad but it's not you know cool and fun excellent so, sorry everybody <laughs> i always bring down the mood okay <laughs> this is the story so this was suggested by uh rach todd 21 and my close friends thank you mm. this is the story of Corey brininger brininger sorry in advance it's pretty sad. Okay. Oh, great. November 1998, Judith Fauti marries Robert Brininger, and they move to a large trailer home in Mark Center, Ohio, which is in Defiance County. Yay. I love it I so just far. I think that's a cool name. Defiance um, County? Mm-hmm. That's pretty dope. And uh, each of them bring with them into their new marriage a child from a previous marriage. So Judith, Judith has a daughter, and Robert has a five-year-old named Corey. 
So Robert, he works at a local steel mill and he supports, or sorry, he works long hours to support his family and he only has like two or three days off a month. So he's like constantly at work. And when he's home, he's usually sleeping. Um, he puts in earplugs and just like goes to sleep. And then Judith cares for the kids. Mm. Um, he and Judith have a baby at this point. So now there are three kids in the home. And uh, Corey's biological mother ultimately rescinds her parental rights. So in 2001, Judith adopts Corey as her own kid. So now Got it. they're the parents of all three of them. Got it. Collectively, if that makes sense. So according to several witnesses, Corey was quiet, withdrawn. Uh, he never seemed to smile much or enjoy life or anything. Um, oh, boy. Yeah. But others, including his aunt, describe him as unruly, always in timeout. Judith referred to her referred to him as her problem child. Um, and so it's kind of mixed as far as, like, what people thought of him. Uh, Robert made plans. At, uh, so at one point, Robert was like, you know what? I haven't spent time with my son. And we used to be so close. And I want to – when he was 10 years old, and he's like, I want to, like, rekindle our bond. And so he takes some time off work to spend quality time with his kid. And uh, he intends to teach Corey how to hunt. And he's like an avid hunter. Robert is himself. So he's like, I want to, this is our bonding yeah. activity. Family. You know. Ohio. Uniting. That's what we do. Camaraderie. Camaraderie. With guns. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, they, they plan this whole thing. He's going to like take his kid to a safety course and um, they're going to go hunting. On November 2nd, Robert takes Corey into the backyard and they start practicing on his grandfather's shotgun. Um, it's like a very, by all accounts, like bonding moment and they have a good time and Corey gets to even shoot the gun once or twice. Aw. Thanks to his dad. So that was November 2nd. Then on November 3rd, the following day, uh, Corey gets home from school and Judith, his mom, uh, takes the other two kids to a garage sale at her mother's house and lets Corey inside and says, we'll be back later. <laughs> Great. Okay. What? This sounds like like evil stepmom and the evil stepsisters. And it's like, we're going to we're gonna right. go junking and That's you true. can sit here. You sweep the chimney or whatever you do. Just clean the cinders. Clean all the cinders, uh, Corey. Oh, Cinder Corey. Cinder Corey. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. So, uh... He's home with Robert, his dad, and the Judith and the two girls go to her 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 mom's house to uh, to a garage sale. So about an hour later, after they leave, a nine one one dispatcher receives a frantic call from a little boy. Oh fuck! It's Corey, and I will say too, this town has four hundred people, or it did at this point. So it is a tiny ass town. <sighs> yeah. Um, he so Corey has called nine one one. He tells the operator that he accidentally shot his father. <gasps> And he starts screaming, I was giving him the gun. I didn't know that it was loaded. And I will say, too, like, the Snapped episode on this, they play, like, the 911 oh, no. call. And it's it's very distressing. Um, so I want to warn you if you watch that. But so he calls. He's in hysterics. He says, I, and the dispatcher says, is he breathing, sweetie? And he's like, no, he's not breathing. And so obviously they immediately send um, the sheriff's office, goes down there. Uh, sheriff's investigator Cliff Vandermark is um, a continuing character through the story got it he shows up um he's the first to arrive on scene and he finds uh he finds cory outside on the porch just like sobbing hysterically he's like show me where your dad is cory brings him inside and indeed um robert has been shot in the head oh my god gunshot wound and is dead so vandermark takes cory back outside he's like inconsolable but he's like tell me what happened um and so Corey says he accidentally he brought the gun into the bedroom to talk to him about their hunting trip that was coming up. And he was like handing his dad the gun and he either tripped or it went off and it shot him. Um, Jesus. I'm so sorry. Jesus. Birth control. I'm sorry, everybody. It is Birth control, the major time. <laughs> it is kind of funny that i thought three hours ago that we'd be done by now so i set an alarm for 6 p.m when clearly no such thing no i even jinxed us even pretending like we, we are kind be. of on a roll for the amount for pretty impressed for how late we got started for the fact that starbucks did not make my order correctly yeah we went we started on a bad foot we went to we have had two rounds of starbucks already <laughs> it's been a long day yeah. at least we're caffeinated all right, I'm so sorry, everybody. Sorry, Eva, that probably scared the shit out of you. Um, Oops. You probably reminded her to also get... Everyone, take your birth control. Take a moment, everybody. Important. Okay, now that we're all back. Um, so, 
Corey tells the investigator he accidentally shot his dad when he was bringing his gun to the bedroom to talk about gun safety in their class. They were going to take a training class before they went hunting. So Judith arrives back home from her mother's like 20 minutes later. She's in hysterics being like, what the hell? What happened? Um, she immediately asks the sheriff's investigators if she can take Corey away. She's like, I don't think he needs to be here anymore. They're like, yeah, take him um, to his grandmother's house. So she drives him there. The sheriff's office takes like a little bit of evidence from the scene. Uh, they take a few photos, but obviously Robert's death is treated as an accident. And on the bed, they found a couple gun safety pamphlets um, where his body was found, which obviously corroborated the fact that they were talking about gun safety and like that was why the gun was out. Um, now, there are a couple deputies who find two aspects of the scene a little bit off, like they're a little bit suspicious. Uh, so Robert was found laying like in a very comfortable reclined position with earplugs in as though he were sleeping and they were like if he was having a conversation why were his headphones on yeah he had like earplugs that he slept in during the day because he worked so much um and so they were like wouldn't he have taken out his earplugs if he were talking to his son about gun safety it just it was like a weird um sure a weird detail and he was kind of laying down under the covers as if he was asleep so it was just a strange uh setup of the body i guess but the death was ruled accidental officially um despite some contradictions and obviously like Corey is in hysterics he's 10 years old like they are not thinking oh he murdered his father right like, this right, doesn't right. add up you know and so um the next day judith who's now a widow uh bring, she begins paperwork at the insurance office and collects a five hundred thousand dollar life insurance policy hmm. and not long after that she takes the kids including Corey, and she moves out of town she's like i don't want to be here anymore um against really small town she's like i'm done with this place sure so now we're gonna fast forward nine years Brrr. Okay, that's Corey my... is 19. Corey is, yes. Wow. I, I know my math. I was like, how did you know that? God damn it. I'm an idiot. Okay. Got, I got a big old brain. <laughs> it's bigger than mine. Is. Full of arithmetic knowledge. Oh my God. Arithmetic. Wow. Um, okay, so nine years later, uh, spring 2012. Right. Judith and the children have moved quite a bit um, after Robert's death. Eventually, Judith had married for the fourth time, becoming Judith Hockey and Corey he um he becomes even more withdrawn um than people had thought when he was a kid he's just like slow which doesn't make i mean it makes total sense like obviously sure. this is a traumatic incident um they cut off con so his mom judith cuts off contact with um robert's family and like robert's family was like we get it like his mom was like i understood you know i didn't want to be picking old wounds um sure. she was remarried she didn't you know want to bring it back up but uh, Corey is having trouble at home. So he, his junior year of high school, he had moved out of his mother's home and moved into a friend's house um, because he was just unhappy at home. There were a lot of rumors uh, throughout his school about like him having shot his dad. He just like couldn't escape the rumors and right. all that. So he had a really hard time and his senior year was especially hard. Uh, one story it was pretty wild. So during shop class, there were these kids arguing about like how bad they had it at home being like, you don't even like... I have it this bad. My mom does yeah. this, whatever. And apparently he had been really quiet. And then from the back of the room just said, you have no idea. And they turned there. One of them was like, okay, yeah, what? Like, prove it. What is your story? And um, he just responds quietly. Have you ever been tied down and beaten? Oh, shit. And obviously his teacher is like, sorry, what? Like, you know, I heard that. Uh, yeah, hello. You got to say something about that now. Yeah, let's address this, please. And so his teacher kind of tries to talk to him and he's like, no, no, like, it's all fine, whatever. Like, I'm over it, yada, yada. So the teacher's like, I couldn't get any more out of him. And he just was withdrawn and refused to talk about it. So, uh, at, like, a little a few months later, he ran into um, his old gym teacher, like, another teacher of his, who uh, kind of started talking to him, and he got, he had been really close to this teacher, and I guess she was, like, kind of a mentor to him, and they got into a deep discussion, and uh, eventually she just kind of said to him, I know it's not the truth about what happened to your dad. And apparently at this point, he just, like, full-on, like, breaks down. And well, he, yeah, someone finally, like, acknowledges him. Exactly. And, like exactly wow. and like he had never he's like i didn't expect it it was just like suddenly it was like somebody had flipped a switch and i just like broke down and um he tells her what really happened on that early november afternoon in 2003 
Wow. So the teacher immediately contacts authorities. Um, when she hears what Corey has to say, she's like, shit, we need to get the police involved. And the next morning when he gets to school, Corey is called down to the school office where Vandermark, who's a guy who nine years before had been the first on the scene, right. is waiting in the office. He's now a lieutenant with the Defiance County Sheriff's oh, Office. Oh, wow. And he's waiting to Sorry, talk Sorry, I'm to like him. chugging my tea. No, I, like, no. The people watching are just watching me go to town on the side. I did that earlier. The ice was so loud. Sorry. Sorry. Keep going. At least you're He's right. a lieutenant now. Yes. And he's the one who had talked to him like at the port on the porch nine years earlier and had comforted him. And now he's like, okay, we hear there's more to this story. Right. Um, so he pretty much right away admits to the lieutenant that like it was not the way that he had framed it when he was 10. He says... I actually shot my dad on purpose. <gasps> and so at this point, they're like, oh, shit. Like, okay, you need to tell us more. Like, uh, you know, they bring him in and they're like, it, was it the abuse that led you to kill? You've been hinting at this abuse this whole time. But then he reveals something equally shocking, which was, it wasn't my dad who beat me. It was my mom. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what the hell is going on here? So at first, he reveals some details of the abuse. Like, he's, you know, he says he was beaten um, regularly from the age of seven onward. Uh, he had to wear turtlenecks and long sleeves. His mom made him wear to, like, cover mm. up the bruises and the scars. Um, Judith would withhold meals if he didn't do his chores. He was beaten with a belt. He was burned with a lighter. He was held, oh my un God. held underwater in the bath. <gasps> like, really traumatic. Oh, my gosh. Horrific stuff. Um, he tells investigators it was Judith, not his father, as they had like initially assumed when he was kind of hinting at. And I think that's why the first teacher didn't really do much because he thought, oh, like his father had already died. Like this isn't an active right. abuse it's, case. It, it was framed like, oh, my dad was someone abusing me, but it's over now. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And so um, he says he, his father actually had no idea about the abuse. He worked so often, was rarely home, and Judith never disciplined him in front of Robert. Um so they asked, like, okay, does she do, does she do this to the other kids? Because there are two younger kids in the house now. And he says, oh, no, they're her children, but I was adopted. And so she never wow. touched her own children that way. But he was treated differently. Um, he says he feared her so much uh, that he never told anyone about it. And she threatened him, obviously. I mean, this classic case, like, uh, you know, he's seven years old. He doesn't know any better where to turn. Um, and then Corey uh, drops the ultimate bombshell, which is, they were like, why did you kill your father? And he's like, she made me do it. <gasps> Yikes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Corey. Yeah. And they're like, hold up. What? Because, <laughs> like, this has just never even occurred to anybody at this point. Even if he had done it intentionally, it was never like, you know, they thought maybe it was something a 10-year-old had come up with, not like that his mother had made him do it. He says Judith forced and coerced him into shooting his father. Um According to Corey, Judith had planned the whole thing out. She had, like, coached him on what to say to 911 when he called 911. Um, she had put the gun in the laundry room, told him where it was, had him bring pamphlets into the room about gun safety to put on the bed before the police arrived, like, had trained him to, to do all this. And they were like, well, I mean, how did she – like, why? Why did she convince you to do this? How did she convince you to do this? And he says, so fucked up. He says she had told him that his dad had brain cancer and that he his it's like beyond fucked up and that um, he was in a lot of pain and that he was helping him, helping his dad. Oh, my God. Like putting him out of his misery. Exactly. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. And she said. Oh, my said, God. I hope the ending to this is, is that she's like is currently burning in hell. Is this not the most like this twisted? This is the worst that you've. I know. Sorry. This one's rough. I was really sad when, you, shit. when your story ended. Corey, I was like, if you're listening, I am so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. If you need a friend, please talk to Let us. Let us know. We'll hang out. Oh, my God. Yikes. Uh, so he said uh, Judith had told him his dad wanted someone to end it for him and had asked for this. <gasps> fuck and oh that, my god so like literally so much fucking twisted manipulation that he thought his own dad wanted him to shoot him christine i know oh it's my like god. the wildest shit it's just so beyond comprehension that a per of like what a vile person that you could do this to a child who's like your adopted child your child um so anyway judith told Corey because Corey's like well why can't he do it or why can't someone else do it and she says robert couldn't do him do it himself because then the insurance wouldn't pay out and his dad wanted to be able to take care of the family after his death so he couldn't you know die by suicide because etc etc so Corey was the only one who could pull this off 
I wonder what his, uh, well, I guess they weren't his step siblings. They were his adoptive siblings. Right, right. right. I, um, I wonder what they thought the story was. Like, did the mom confide in them? Like, this is what he thinks? Or do you think the mom took this, like, essentially to her grave or plan to take it to her grave and the siblings also thought it was a total mm. accident my thought is because they were several years younger that like they probably oh, 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 oh. yeah I, I keep thinking they're like teenagers and they all were like oh you know no, hanging out I'm, together knowing that this poor child was going to have to deal with this no yeah i'm pretty sure he was the oldest by several years um, okay got it got it got it yeah so i yeah my guess is that she would have just not, not told said anything. anybody yeah um wow okay sorry yeah no no uh this is a good point i didn't really think about that um but yeah so apparently that's what she had told him and um after telling lieutenant vandermark and investigators who were probably like what the actual fuck like this is such a we thought we had solved this or handled this 10 years ago um so after telling him what really happened he just like solemnly looked at them and said am i going to jail <gasps> which was like the one fear that he had like held on sure to. and i'm sure she fucking told him like you will like die in jail if you say a word yeah. you know i mean obviously she threatened the hell out of him uh and scared the shit out of him so uh they were like listen we don't know what's going to happen at this point but like thank you for whatever <laughs> like we'll we'll work on this um and he so an investigator later remarked that he um the fact that he was still so controlled by judith that he thought like still that this is my fault i'm going to jail even though like he had just admitted that like i mean he was 10 but somehow he still thinks like this is my fault which is just must be so eating you alive sure so um lieutenant vandermark and investigators spend like a year basically collecting evidence to corroborate the story and like take her to court um so teachers they find teachers who remember like the long sleeves when it wasn't appropriate and like uh the turtlenecks and pants on hot days and um one elementary school teacher had actually kept a picture Corey drew where he depicted his own face covered in bruises just stuff like that (sighs) where over the years it like pieced together to make a little more sense if you think about it like he was already going through trauma so i'm sure it could be explained as like oh he's had this horrific thing happen where he accidentally killed his dad i mean also like a big component of being in an abusive relationship whether it's like romantic or parental and child like parent and child like it's just that slow gradual manipulation where everything it's like it's to a point where everything they do, they've already convinced you that part of it kind of makes sense. So, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. if he was going through years of, you know, gradual, gradually increasing trauma, eventually being told, like, you need to shoot your dad probably wasn't so fucking bananas. That's right. I mean, you're right, because it was going on for years before that. Exactly. And his dad didn't even know. And so, like, just the... Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. Holy shit. So she clearly had like a vice grip on him. And I mean, obviously, why wouldn't you as the mother of a 10 year old? A 10 year old. And it's like, if you don't put him out of your misery, then you're making your dad suffer. Yes, exactly. He wants you to do the only person that doesn't hurt you that you love so deeply, like wants this. Yeah. If you don't do it, then you're you're, you know, being disrespectful and rude and And ruining our and taking away his one last wish. Ugh. And he obviously never had cancer either. So like just the <gasps> whole bullshit of the lies. I didn't so even want to ask that. Twisted. Oh, it was all made up. Um, so friends and family recall that Judith would never leave Corey alone in a room with every uh, with anyone. Like sure. his grandmother was interviewed in the snapped thing. And she's like, it hadn't even occurred to me at this point that I had never spent a second alone with him once Judith entered the picture because she was too scared, obviously, to like right, let him he would say something. Exactly. Which just just traumatic. Oof. I can't even imagine. Um, his grandmother speculates this was both to control him and make sure obviously he didn't say anything on March 7th, 2013. Uh, finally Judith was arrested on the charge of murder nearly a decade after Robert's death. Uh, Corey, however, was not. And at the time they actually weren't sure because they were like, I don't know if this, maybe there's some criminal element to like not telling, but in the end they were like, um, even though he pulled the trigger because of his age at the time of the shooting, the mitigating factors of abuse, coercion, like no criminal charge was warranted. So thankfully they didn't end up getting arrested for this. So on March 28th, um, 2013, Judith's trial began and, uh, Corey actually was like, very obviously terrified to do this but he took the stand um, wow that's really brave yeah exactly as a witness for the prosecution um he said he couldn't look at judith during the trial uh he tried but he just couldn't do it sure 
Um, prosecutors basically brought up like a financial motive for the murder because in addition to life insurance, social security death benefits made the payout close to a million dollars. So like right away, she was the beneficiary of a million bucks essentially. Um, it was brought up that, so like even after all this, like literally the only thing was money and she ruined two lives like so deeply for that. Um, so it was brought up that she began all the fire to file all the paperwork like less than 24 hours. I think it was like 12 hours Yikes. after her husband died, which is not necessarily always obviously like uh, incriminating. But in this case, you know, she was very gung ho about it. Yeah. Um, and it makes for a good motive. So uh, prosecutors also brought in witnesses to corroborate the child abuse, which was like a separate charge, obviously, um, including psychologists and doctors who spoke to Corey and physically examined examined him. Um, He still had scars. So there was like literally physical evidence of this. Um, The defense attacked Corey's credibility. They alleged that he was lying about the abuse the whole time. Um, They theorized. (sighs) So this is like pretty. This is their uh, version of events is that Corey shot his father because he and Judith were intending to send him to military school because he was a, quote, problem child. Oh, my God. And that he, like, didn't want to go, didn't want to go, and was fighting them on it to a point that he snapped and shot his own dad. I can't imagine, and I mean, this, obviously, this is not a an isolated case, but, like, I can't imagine having to go to trial, period, knowing you're not guilty, already, like, also having gone through abuse your entire life, and so to even take the stand is so fucking courageous. Right. Just... For someone to just absolutely try to tear your Can't entire imagine. whatever's left of your reputation apart. Oh, yeah. like And just, like, berate you and make right. you, like, shame you into even trying to stand up for yourself. And you were a child and you're like, I was horrifically abused. Like, horrifically abused and manipulated and then they're like you're full of you're lying and you're trying. I mean, it's just horrific. Yeah, I can't imagine. Like, to go on, st- on the witness stand wow. must have been terrifying. Um, and so then they also suggested that Corey was just angry that Judith didn't share the million dollar payout money. And that's why he was now accusing her of this. What the fuck? Okay. What the fuck? So after, so the jury deliberated for two hours and like Corey said, when they came back, his heart just sank because he was like, that was two hours. Like, wow. they probably don't believe anything that I said. Um, however, the jury came back with the, with a verdict of guilty on the charge of insurance fraud guilty on four charges of endangering the welfare of a child and finally guilty on the charge of aggravated murder oh wow so guilty on all counts within two hours which is like pretty cool yeah incredible incredibly fast um so the judge sentenced judith to life without parole in prison and Corey was very relieved he said like this is the first time he didn't feel like he had to look over his shoulder everywhere he went yeah wasn't living in fear anymore Unfortunately, that only lasted for a few years because Judith appealed so many times for a new trial that in 2016, she was finally granted her appeal (gasps) based on lack of evidence that this had actually happened. And because apparently three witnesses uh, in the original trial, they determined to could have potentially tainted the outcome of the trial. So they were like, this is like a they're overturning it. And um, the uh, the uh, verdict was appealed. So then in 2019, they slated a new trial for that March. Um, but Judith, dis- instead of going to trial again, took a plea deal in exchange for 10 years in prison, including the five she already served. So five years more. <sighs> and her defense attorneys are like very, very uh, gung-ho about stressing that the plea does not admit her guilt, only that the prosecutors could have enough evidence to convict. So they wanted to just take the plea deal and move on even though she wasn't guilty judith to this day claims she is innocent and she uh, if all goes as planned should be released in 2024 so like four years from now very soon well Corey, if you're listening or if someone you know listens to this please pass this message along i fucking believe you absolutely that is bullshit i'm so sorry for everything that's happened horrific i mean and he was saying like in the show in the episode that like when the police were like oh we believe you it was like the most shocking you know what i mean it was just like they believe me like he never thought gosh. you know and then his first thought is i'm going to jail which is just the saddest thing so it's like they believe me oh fuck they believe <laughs> yeah, me right exactly yeah i mean he must have been in just turmoil for all those years i can't even fathom but like as for him um he's doing okay he is moving on with his life um apparently he has goals of attending law school and Good. wants to be an advocate for child abuse victims oh and also like a weird note is that 
when so his i mean speak of like weird psychological things but his mom's family like believed he was abused but they told themselves or they believe outwardly outspokenly that somebody else was abusing him not his mother and they never cared to find that out find so out about they it? think like he won't admit who it is or something i don't know they said they believe it happened before judith entered the picture someone else had abused him and he just won't admit to it or he thinks Weird. it was her because uh his grandmother i think it, oh no his aunt his aunt who called him the problem child or whatever um she was saying she was interviewed and she was saying um yeah well the psychologist said like it was real like he was really abused he wasn't making it up which leads me to think someone else was doing this to him and i'm like how twisted must your logic be also i feel like he's definitely been honest about a whole lot lately like exactly i feel like if something else were there i feel like the second i opened my mouth about the truth on that i would not be able to stop telling the truth yeah yeah and all the psychologists who interviewed him were like yeah this is all very legitimate like he's not making this up he's very traumatized um this all happened to him and he's saying it was his mother, and it leads led him to, you know, kill his father. Wow. Um, and so that was just was a weird thing, and I wonder if that's just, like, your brain protecting, like, your your world <laughs> view. Sure, You yeah. know, like, oh, no, 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 sure, he was abused, it's horrible, but it was not her. Right, like, right, 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 right. So she claims she's innocent. Um, apparently, when she was taken out of the, like, when she was originally um sentenced to life in prison the security was taking her out and she tried to like lunge and grab him and everyone was like well that adds to the uh <laughs> that doesn't help her <laughs> right it's not a good look if you're trying to remain innocent quote unquote um so right like i said Corey has the goal of being an advocate for child abuse victims um which is awesome and also obviously uh side note if you or someone you know is a victim of abuse or you think even maybe possibly it could be not necessarily physical if you see something say something right not necessarily physical could be um, mental emotional whatever uh you can reach out to the national domestic violence hotline 24 7 at 1-800-799-7233 that is the very traumatic and twisty turny story of Corey Brininger. Wow. I hope you're okay. I do too, Corey. Oh my gosh. You deserve the whole fucking world. I hope you become the most famous, most rich, wealthiest, most powerful <laughs> lawyer in the whole wide world. Oh, <gasps> uh, yeah. You deserve it for sure. It's uh. just horrific. It's just horrific. And to be like, they were like, well, did this, is this happening to the other kids? And he's like, oh, no, no. They're her real children. <laughs> it's like, wow. how twisted. He deserves a lot of love. Yes. And we are sending it his way. Yes. So that's disturbing. It was definitely, I mean, absolutely fucked up, but what a story. What a story. I mean, definitely a lot of twists and turns on that one. Yours was a fun half today. <laughs> it usually is. <laughs> Let's go back to the fact that, like, Curious George doesn't have a tail. I'm still thrown about that because the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I don't know. I think I had a book with his tail. Well, anatomically, he should have a tail, right? Yeah, right? I think. I, do monkeys have tails is this another if it one? doesn't have a tail it's not a monkey if it has oh yeah. is that a thing well it's a veggie tail song oh <laughs> like, if it doesn't have a tail it's not a monkey if it doesn't have a tail it's not a monkey it's an ape so is he an ape no if he doesn't have a tail he's an ape i thought he was oh, a monkey oh no if he doesn't have a tail he's a monkey right if it doesn't have a tail it's not a monkey oh, if it doesn't a have a tail it's not a monkey it's an ape so it's an ape so curious, curious george, george. Hmm. curious george i'm curious about you hit us hmm. up in the comments below <laughs> let us know cg um <laughs> so uh on that note sorry uh, this is a good story i don't know how to finish this you do it this time what we never know how to finish this thank you for listening i guess <sighs> if you would like to learn more about us for some ungodly reason please go to and that's why we drink.com pretty much every piece of information you need about us is there or google m schultz and select any of the pre-approved uh, <laughs> fill-in suggestions because there's some wild ones <laughs> or look up uh christine schieffer husband <laughs> or christine schieffer m schultz which seem to be the only care people thing people care about <laughs> uh thank you guys for listening um i don't know when this one comes out but if we do have a show coming to your town and there are still tickets please please come i'm telling you that the show is super duper worth it you're gonna have a blast yeah and we're not we're doing something different hopefully next time um if there's another tour so this is like the the one chance to see it yes can't yeah. wait to give you all an update on maine and uh maine and vermont because i've never been and i'm very excited i'm excited too um thank you everyone for listening and that's why we drink <laughs>
At least we came up with that ending. <laughs> At least we've got an ending.